This stuff's so good. Whoa! It, it doesn't taste like anything. Now we're about to head out to an awesome three-day adventure later in this episode where we're going to be heading to the eastern woodlands into a huge national forest and kind of just explore new territory and learn a whole bunch with one of our awesome buddies, Chris Deslow of Four Directions Bushcraft. So the easiest way to break down my pack is we're just going to go through item by item. Now this is my slingshot from Zachary Fowler. We're going to try to take this out and uh, see what kind of critters we can get with it. You know, rabbits, squirrels, all that good stuff. Just have a little bit of fun. I think my main focus is going to be fishing on this particular trip. This is my fire steel from Four Directions Bushcraft. We've got this six inch by half inch fire steel with a wax wood stick by Pro Camp Tech. Uh, I love the wax wood stick because it is just a little bit more impervious th to the element than fat wood. But the benefit to this is how sap over years will get harder. This never gets harder. This has an absolute indefinite shelf life. And you can see we've used it quite a bit. Moving forward, we have my TH30 headlamp by Thrunite. This is one of my favorite um, headlamps given the fact that when the battery's in it, the overall body and the way these straps are is one of the lightest ones out there, and it's pretty dang budget friendly. Then my we have my multi-tool. This is the Gerber Center Drive. I utilize this all the time. I think what I like about it is I can access the pliers for like my fishing hooks and everything. Spring-loaded pliers. It's really good. But I have the bit set for urban utility and EDC. Then I got my bear bowl. We're going to bring in the Mama Bear from Bear Minimum. We've had the bear bowl on our channel for years. We love the bear bowls. If you don't know what they are, definitely do some research. We're going to have links down in the video description to get more info. These things are beast. This is, you guys saw this on my 12 day challenge. This thing was a champ. It built a full on shelter and this thing is still rock solid and razor sharp for like 30 bucks. The silky saw is a champ. Next up we have my Wells Lamont gloves. These are my same pair that I had for my 30 day survival challenge, my uh, five day challenge, my 12 day trip. These things have been through hell and they are rock solid for 12 bucks. You're not going to get a better pair of leather gloves for the money, in my opinion. Now, this is going to be the water bottle we're taking with us. This is the Frontier Aquamira drinking straw. I don't think I have the straw attached to it right now. Nope. But it's got the water filter and everything inside. This will actually filter out bacteria and viruses. Um, and it doesn't filter out viruses. There's a chemical, a specialized coating or something in the fibers on the filter that kill the viruses. That's kind of where that comes from. Then this is my hammock. From Warbonnet Hammocks, we've taken, we actually have the same one we used in our 30 day survival challenge back uh, here in Texas. Uh, it's gonna be fun to take this out of state and uh, let it see how it performs in a different area. Then we've got my Mora Garberg. I love this knife, that 90 degree spine. This is the Carbon. This is the newer one, I think, for 2018, 2019. But uh, I think it's gonna be a good companion knife for me in the field. We've used it a bunch. And uh, I'm finally gonna have access to fat wood, so I'm gonna be utilizing my axe out in the field so I can go get some of that delicious uh, woodsman gold, that ruby red awesomeness, that pine fire ladder stuff, and then I'm taking my Holtzbrook L mic to do the job. Now, because I'm gonna be about a thousand miles away from home, this is my sleeping bag, this is my Rover Buell. We're gonna be utilizing this, this uh, can help me up to 45 to 14 degrees. This is my Bushwhack tarp from War Bonnet Hammocks. This is, was has been in all of my adventures where you've seen me in a hammock. This is my favorite little ultralight hammock. It weighs absolutely nothing at all. It's like playing with a marshmallow, man. It just like weighs nothing, but it's super, super strong tarp. And then obviously my cold steel shovel. I don't think I've gone anywhere without it. And I'm kind of interested to see how the extra fertile soil will respond to this. And I kind of get to play with all these soft woods and loose soils that I never get to play with here in Texas. Then, this is my backpack. This is the same one we used on the 12 day budget survival challenge. This is the one came from um, PMP prep box. I loved this backpack so much. I decided to take it with me to the Eastern woodlands to uh, trek it out. Yeah, it's my little patch from Diaz knives. We love Julio Diaz over there in California. Dude makes some beast blades. And then I've got my hidden woodsman haversack. I think you guys are almost tired of seeing this, but there's a reason I keep bringing it with me. It's got miles and miles and miles and miles on it for a reason. And I love it. Now, for the most part, this is my kit that I'm going to be bringing with me. This is not a survival challenge. This is just going to be uh, camping in a national forest in the woods. But there might be one or two things that get brought with me. Probably something like either like my whoopee blanket you might end up seeing somewhere in the video. And you might see some fishing line added to it. Because we're going to, I think we're going to experiment with some hobo fishing reels and things like that. Having some fun. But all in all, 
Uh, let's not waste any time and just uh, get straight to the video. I'm at with my buddy Chris. We're actually here in the Eastern Woodlands. We are like a thousand miles away from Texas right now. To give you guys a more fun experience, we're gonna be out here exploring some awesome, awesome forests and uh, just amazing, vast, just landscapes of nothingness out here. Hopefully the fishing, the plant life, all the foraging, the hunting, all that stuff is gonna be so much better. So uh, I think this is gonna be one heck of a fun trip. It's gonna be a rainy, multi-day overnight adventure. Well, we have plans to do some primitive camping, but the road is getting washed away and it's actually gets pretty deep. It's like three or four feet, so we don't want to take our SUV out before we hit a trailhead so we can go hike in. So it looks like we're going to have to keep looking. This uh, rainy season in the eastern woodlands. <laughs> oh man, we're going to keep searching though. I found Briarfoot! Edible, baby! Always oh, keep looking. We got some more right here too. Right there. There's stuff everywhere, man. Yep. This stuff's so good. Poison ivy is very prevalent out here for anybody who's local in the uh, more of the East Coast region, not in Texas. But poison ivy is everywhere. And this right here, is this is jewelweed. And the good thing, this is a nature's antidote to poison ivy. A lot of people think that foraging, medicinals, wild edibles is very boring. And in a sense, it is. You're basically nature's, it's nature's grocery store. It's not exciting. But having those antidotes, if you are out in the woods and you're stuck in a situation, you get skin irritations and it starts cutting up your skin, open wounds, infections, knowing what those medicinal plants are to help you in those ailments to make your situation not as crappy is pretty important. Hey guys, so we are actually in luck now. We actually talked to the National Forest Service and the conservation agents over there. We, we found an education center. Uh, we have no signal here, like I said, we just kind of got lucky and drove by them and they led us to an area where we can do like hike in primitive camping which is going to be awesome so we're i think the area we're going to is 16,000 acres of untouched landscape that we could basically just get lost and there's going to be creeks and streams leads into major rivers there's going to be trout fishing i mean if this works out the way it wants to it's going to be freaking awesome man i'm super 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 excited Wow. Dude, is this just not amazing? Beautiful. What's up, everybody? So, I am here with my buddy, Chris Deslow, from Four Directions Bushcraft. We are actually here in his stomping ground on his, uh, his home turf. We are in the eastern woodlands. We have access to this amazing 16,000 acres. So, for the next couple days, this is going to be basically my playground. We're going to explore. I have no knowledge of this area. And we're just going to see what we can find, what type of things we can hunt, fish, trap, and just have an awesome time. So for the next couple of days, man, it's going to be awesome. But first, our priorities are going to be shelter, fire, and water, man. So uh, let's get started, bud. Let's do it. So while I'm finishing up my shelter, we're gonna have Chris, he's gonna make the actual fire pit for us. So we'll actually have a fire. Everything out here is literally soaked, drenched. There's been flooding in the surrounding areas. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be fun, but we're gonna show you obviously that uh, the fire starting stuff we're gonna be using. Dry wood, it won't matter. We'll make it happen, it'll work. to go once I get my balance here. That's the beauty of it. Now I can turn it up on itself or I can just leave it like that. 
And once that gets going, which it already is, it doesn't take long, I can just feed these little pencil sized sticks in there. Yep. I've already got them processed up. If they were dry, I wouldn't have to process these. I'd just put them right on top of the waxwood stick. But because everything is just soaking wet, it's gotta dry first. I'm trying to find some rocks for things like our for grills and platforms, fire rings for the fire pit. These rocks are absolutely everywhere out here. All right. While Chris is tending to the fire for us, he's uh, pretty much the fire master. So for night one, I figured to make sure, since we didn't have a lot of time, make sure I got done right the first time. Let him handle that. But I'm trying to build a rock platform. So if it rains tonight with the canopy, with my shelter, I can put my pack right here underneath the tarp and it's still protected even if it rains. It's just a little quick idea because this area is so crazy full of rocks. Figured it would uh, be a quick and a pinch. I can create a hanging platform for it, build a chair and do all that stuff later, but just for a quick fix, I wanted to go ahead and uh, get it done quick, fast, and hurry. Oh, dude, this is like a little creek, dude. It sounded so much louder. It sounded like a river. It did. I wonder where the actual noise is coming from. Tastes good though. You taste your water yet? Not yet. I got the filter of can. Oh, right on, bud. But this being so close, it's gonna be a huge benefit. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to bring our big bags uh, in the morning when we can see everything. Maybe we'll try to actually find the actual river. Find the source of this. Oh, it feels great. <sighs> if it gets too hot tomorrow, I'm waiting this. Look at this, I just found this. What? A giant wood ear mushroom, dude. Really? Just right on the side of this branch. I was about to throw it in the fire. Let me see. I mean, it's gigantic. It's Holy, a, okay guys, oh, stay, stay there, dude. I'm gonna show them. Oh it's like my enough gosh, this thing us. is huge. Guys, this thing is so huge. And if I'm not mistaken, these, these are edible, right? These are edible, yeah, yeah. yep. Dude, these, these are, are edible. These are humongous. I think I, I don't really think they taste like anything. They're kind of gelatinous, but here, guys, check this out. This is a monster. I mean, it looks like an ear, you know, and that's where it gets its name. That is crazy. Now that is gonna help for dinner while we're out here, man, big time. It is a big flappy ear mushroom, <laughs> mushroom right? And obviously, this is what your great grandfather has when he's playing chess with you in the nursing home. <laughs> big old gelatinous ears. <laughs> So these are all good, and obviously if we can't positively identify these, then we're not going to eat them. But Yeah, are... and if you're not 100% sure on mushrooms, because a lot of them can be toxic if you're not careful, make sure you know 100%. We're 100% on these, so we're okay, but like I said, I'm seeing the smaller one. I want to save this for a meal. So. And I mean... It, it doesn't taste like anything. It's crunchy. Have and you it ever tastes had, like an ear. You, have you ever? <laughs> <laughs> have you have you ever had like bubble tea? Yeah, yeah, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. You know the little bubbles, the balls that are in there. That's what it tastes like. Kind it's, of. It's crunchy. It, this is fresh too. This is just. So, 
We can add this to anything. Or Doom. eat it just like we're doing. Heck yeah, man. Dinner! Well, this Beautiful. is part of dinner. Oh, that's like starting to look good. Mm-hmm. You can't beat those. Gendry, start the forge. <laughs> okay, so we find another little creek bed, and there are some massive frogs in here. Since I'm holding my big rig, I'm going to let Chris try to sneak up on it like a ninja. Right there, stunned too. Well, at least we know we can do some uh, frog gigging tomorrow, dude. Frog legs, I'll take it if we can get if we can get that a few dozen. That was a dozen. giant frog. <laughs> yeah, it was. We can get one now. What wood did I cut? I was that was that. Birch poplar? This, what is that? I think this might be poplar. It's yeah, really, really soft. It's really soft. Do you hear the you hear the, the crickets out and all the bugs and all the humming out? It's, oh it's man. So peaceful it's out. Beautiful. You get the birds chirping a little bit. So we'll have no problem getting some frogs with this tonight. It'll be good for dinner. So we weren't too prepared for this. We won't have bank line or anything, but. Oh, I just messed you up. No, you're good, bud. Hold. Nah. All right, that'll do. Yeah, let's go find a small stick for you so we can wedge that in between. Here, is that too big or do you want something that might smaller? Be good. If yeah. It's, if it's out that might do it's real tight I just need another one It is really tight in there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's tattered in Jenna Jameson spandex. <laughs> Alright, while he's finishing that frog gig, I'm gonna go and do a little bit more scouting and see how many uh, frogs we got, see if I can uh, set them up real nice. Oh, man, frog legs for dinner would be so good. Oh, super excited. So this is the big bushcraft frog gig spear that I cut down for Chris while we're making. I mean, we wanted to make sure we could get as far because we weren't sure where on the bank they might be, so. Totally primitive, real quick setup. No, this was definitely quick and dirty, but that'll definitely do the trick, man, for sure. Did you get him? We're gonna uh, grab my slingshot. We're gonna take the spear, and I, I think we're gonna keep night hunting a little bit. Cause uh, I mean, we may not catch anything for the first day, but 
if we can get a, even a small meal, it'll be totally worth it. I think foraging is not going to make a whole lot of sense, but but uh, I think at the end of it, it's going to be uh, worthwhile for us to chase some frogs. I don't know, squirrels, raccoons, whatever we can get our hands on, man. So, uh, get rodents for dinner. Dude, I think we just did it. We did it. We got a land bridge. Whoop, whoop. Now I just got to pray I don't fall on my face or slip or crush my nuts. It's finally drying out. That's good. Yeah, that fire's going strong. Oh, that feels so good. It's hot. It's real nice. All right, y'all. Well, we found we uh, the flooded creek. Uh, as you guys got to see, uh, Chris being an awesome teammate, built a land bridge for me so I could get across. But um, I think we're just gonna enjoy the fire for a little bit, kind of dry out our socks and our boots just a smidge, and just hit the hay. And we're gonna, I think, start early in the morning. It's early in the morning tomorrow. Yeah, <sighs> we'll have a lot to do in the morning, but we'll be able to get a lot of exploring done in the, during the daylight, and we'll be able to, you know, find any rivers or springs or creeks or whatever we have, and see what fishing opportunities we might have. Cause I, I would love some fish. Definitely. That'd be a good meal tomorrow. All right, y'all. So, chilling in the hammock. There is legitimately 100% no service out here. <laughs> like I said, we're surrounded by 16,000 acres of absolutely nothing, which is awesome. It's a very rare treat to have access to this much land that we can just explore. Uh, right now, there's a lot of flooding going on, but I still think it's going to make it fun. But like I said, I got a place to sleep. We got some water, got a fire. I ain't mad. And the sounds coming out of this freaking forest, dude, are so, it's so peaceful. You got the bugs chirping, you got frogs, you know, humming around. I did so awesome. But anyway, guys, stay tuned for day two. Now that we have just pretty much the coolest Narnian spot in the world, where I think we're going to just, just crush it tomorrow. I think we're going to have a lot of fun exploring. Hopefully, we'll be able to show you all the awesome plant life and wildlife, the medicinals, the edibles, the fungi. I mean, just all the things tomorrow is going to be sick. So, later. Thank you.